You guys have seen my 2022 Honda Monkey on the channel before, and I bought this bike because we were doing a lot of mini moto videos on TFL bike, and I figured I can't be the mini moto guy and not own one myself. So I converted to a mini moto guy, and then I've been telling Case for months, you need one too. And finally, he found one, and he got such an awesome bike, a little Honda Z50 mini trail. And it's like the clone version of my bike 50 years earlier. This was based on this bike right here. So let's bring Case in. He'll tell you about what he just bought. Not only have I bought myself a tiny little bike, but I have actually bought the superior tiny little bike. This is Honda's Z50 or the Mini Trail. It's a little 49cc, single cylinder, simple as dirt bike. It doesn't even have a battery. This is as cool, fun, easy as it gets. I bought it because I want to use it as a camp bike, throw it on the hitch of my truck, take it up into the mountains, and this is perfect for that because it weighs next to nothing. The handlebars fold down, and there's really nothing in the world that can keep it from running unless it runs out of fuel. We gotta talk about the size difference between these two bikes because it's pretty massive and a lot of the parts look similar, but just take a look at the seat for example. It's like double the size, but clearly resembles the old seat. Take a look at the headlight up front. Very similar old school round headlight design, but once again, way, way smaller on the old Z50. It goes down to the fenders, very similar design there. Even the forks, much thinner on the older Z50. And then down to the wheels, you've got little 12 inch wheels on the newer version. What are these, Case? How many inches? Eight inch wheels on this. I thought they were tens, but they're even smaller than that. Eight inch wheels continues onto the tank. You got a puny little gas tank here. And yeah, the whole theme continues even when you look at the motor. Little 50cc compared to the 125 in my monkey. So in every way, this is much smaller, much cuter, much more innocent. And uh, the monkey feels like a mini moto when you're riding it around. This feels like a tiny moto. It's on a completely different level in terms of size. The design is mimicked on this new bike from the old, even down to this white detail on the bottom half of the tank. These also both happen to be a metallic blue, and you can see this classic and really cool mini trail badge on the side of the tank in red. Well, you've got a Honda badge here on the side of the Monkey, the 125, the brand new one that's also in red. So just so many similarities between the design on these two bikes. But of course, this older bike is a little farm fresh. I'll say it's um, trail proven. So there are some parts of it that aren't that fantastic. This monkey on the other hand is stunning and it is so well built. It's beautifully painted, beautifully constructed. What's amazing about these brand new Honda Mini Motos is that they don't feel like a small bike that you pulled out of a cereal box. It feels like a full-size bike that was shrunk down with a futuristic laser because all of the components on here are built and painted to the same degree of quality that you would expect from a full-size motorcycle. There's a lot of things you get on this new monkey that you won't find on the old Z50, and that starts right here. You've got a clutch lever and a true, this bike has a four speed, the new ones have a five speed, but over there on the mini trail, it's a three speed. And this is your rear brake right here. You do have a pedal for the brake as well, but no clutch, it's a semi-auto. Also, this is meant to be a street bike. So you've got a fuel gauge, speedometer, it even blinks at you when you turn it on, trip computer, odometer, and this bike has a couple of extra add-ons. So I have a temp gauge and a tachometer, but on this bike over here, you don't get any of that. No instrumentation whatsoever. You do have a headlight, you do have a tail light, but no signals, no dash, no tack, obviously no temp gauge. It's very bare bones. I don't think I've ever come across an old school motorcycle that starts more easily than the Z50. So much so, in fact, that you can actually get it started by hand. It doesn't even take the strength of a leg to get it running. Very, very reliable, very simple, a little rattly. It needs tiny bit of love, but it's a good bike. You can see uh, headlight gets brighter when you rev it. And it is a tiny bit smoky when you first start it up, but once it gets up to temp, it's as clean as Alex's Cummins. 
Instead of a needless instrument cluster, I have this very cool H badge on the top of my headlight in red so it contrasts from the rest of the headlight. And then this little light right up here tells me whether I'm in high beam or low beam on the headlight because it's got both. All right, let's run through a few more differences on these bikes. First of all, the handlebars, these are much narrower, but they also have these knobs on here. They're made to fold down. Very cool design. They kind of tried to mimic it on here. They didn't put fake knobs on it, but obviously these bars don't fold. They have a similar shape though. Uh, moving on to the brakes, much more advanced brakes on the new bike as to be expected. Disc brakes front and rear. Mine even has some steel braided lines on it. You've got drum brakes on this bike. Um, and yeah, just a much smaller wheel and brake setup all together. And then there's the legality. So this bike, you can go into a dealership, buy it from a dealer, they'll give you a title, a plate, it comes with a horn, signals, it's a street bike. Whereas this, yeah, it has a spot for a license plate on the back, it does have a headlight and a tail light, and you could probably go through the process of getting this titled and putting a plate on it and making it street legal, but you really don't want to ride this on the street. It's one, way too slow, and it's also way too small. The wheels are gonna, you know, get caught up in every little bump, and you also sit really low to the ground, so it's gonna be easy for cars to miss you. So that's a true street bike, a small one at that. This is a farming, camping, trail riding bike for around your property. These are both very cool motorcycles, and as similar as they look, they're very, very different. Like we've discussed, this is a great motorcycle to pack in with the rest of your things and transport really easily to go ride around in the forest, go do a small trail dirt road around your property. Perfect for that. I ride this one in my front yard a bunch and practice wheelies on it. It's great, good way to kill time. This, the Monkey 125, it's a motorcycle that you can actually get out on the road. You can take it places. It's not a fantastic highway bike, but really any other kind of riding, it's a blast for that. So two very similar looking bikes with very different purposes. I paid 2,200 bucks for this Monkey uh, and Alex paid, what, 3,400 for this Monkey 125. So my Z50, surprisingly close to the new monkey in price for how much less bike it is. So if you're going for bang for the buck, arguably this 125 is your better option, but. To be fair, I bought this when the market wasn't crazy. So I think right. now this would be closer to like a 4,000, maybe even, you know, $4,500 bike. Yeah, but either way, if you were to spend your money on either one of these, a Z50 or a Monkey 125, you're gonna have fun. That's, there's, that's a guarantee. 